Hello and welcome to Engine Adventures off-road review of this beautiful 2022 Chevy Colorado ZR2 with the 3.6 liter V6 engine and of course like all ZR2s Multimatic DSSV shocks. This thing is a beast off-road. Let's get into it All right, we're gonna climb this rock. I have yet to do it in any vehicle, even some with rear diff locks. So let's see what we can do. I'm gonna get up close to it and then we'll lock both front and rear and see if this little Colorado can make it. Not sure why it's beeping. Oh, when you do lock both differentials, ABS gets shut off because all four wheels are spinning the same speed and it can't tell if a wheel's slipping or not. So. It lets you know there, but anyway, this is how you tell if the lockers are on or off. There's nothing on the dash. Just those lights there, which are good enough. So let's see if we can climb up this rock. There we are. And like I said, this is the first vehicle that's done that. The grass is a tiny bit flat. And this is a big climb. So this grass has always been just too slick. And you see it spun a little bit, but really not much up there on the rock there. And check out the articulation there. That's pretty darn good articulation, but that is pretty much the limit. So I can't quite lift it off the ground. I could change my angle and we could do a little better, but fully stuffed there, over here, not quite all the way out, but pretty close. And then close to being stuffed here, but not really. There's a bit more travel, up travel on that. So it does have a little more travel than that. But anyway, this is the first vehicle that's been able to make that climb. And with the front locker in, there was hardly, well, basically no slipping at all. All righty, we are in four-wheel drive auto. I'm just gonna put it in drive. Rear diff locks not off, track stalls, just normal, whatever. It's like you do driving down the road, but uh, let's get the high speed going. See how these DSSV shocks work. We're at 20 miles an hour. I've been really tense, but the truck's been smooth as can be. No bottoming out. I keep thinking it's gonna bottom out. We're at like 25. Somehow that didn't bottom out 23 miles an hour. Uh, wow. So these shocks definitely doing their work. Front end came off the ground. I mean, we're close to 30 miles an hour. It's, don't get me wrong, it's jostling me. It's tossing me around the truck a little bit, but the truck itself, so smooth. Can't believe we didn't lose our camera on the outside. But man, this thing's just eating up the bumps. <laughs> Some nice person stacked rocks on there so that when you're coming around that corner, you can see it better. Uh, we'll keep going just because this thing's doing so well. Ooh, big bump. Wow, this truck handles it. So those are some those were pretty rough bumps there. You can probably tell by how much I'm shaking the camera, even though it does have the stabilization on. But Yeah, <laughs> and you hear the keys smack in as they bounce around. But the suspension, I never felt it bottom out hard, not one time. So that's really impressive. And we did lose the rear camera finally, so.
Hey, quick interruption here. If you're enjoying the video, be sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, comment down below, let me know what you think about the ZR2. And if you have any other questions or anything, be sure to comment down below and let me know why. It really helps the channel grow, helps YouTube algorithms pick it up, and helps me continue to make these videos. Let's get back to it. All right, here in tool drive, you can see the traction control system try to break the spinning wheels, but it doesn't do good enough to make it up this climb. Obviously here, with the rear diff locked, it's able to make the climb, but you can see both rear wheels spinning at the same rate, which is exactly what we want. Here in four wheel drive auto, you can see the rear wheels slip a little bit before it does engage the transfer case locking it together and then the front wheel spin and it struggles just a tiny bit, but it's able to make this climb fairly easily. Next up is four wheel drive low. And you can see a little bit more wheel slip here again, but traction control and stability control are automatically turned off in four wheel drive low. So while it did take a little more effort, it was able to make the climb. Here in four wheel drive low with the rear differential locked, you can hear it's binding of the drive line and the tires a little bit are slipping to release that tension, but climbing the hill, there's almost no wheel spin at all. There's just a tiny bit. And that's just with the rear locked. If the front were locked, you wouldn't even have noticed any wheel slippage at all. We're gonna go down the hill. I don't have the diffs locked, but I am. Well, we'll lock the rear right now. If you're going straight down the hill, you can lock front and rear. If you're uh, not, if you have to turn, don't lock the front. 19 degrees, feels steeper than that. 20, 21, got up to like 21 degrees there, but 22, that's, that's more like it. So I'm still on the brake. We'll check the gearing in just a minute. Still on the brake. And off the brake. I'll put the crawl ratio up on the screen. We are about three to four miles an hour. Not too bad. This thing has a 342 axle ratio and that's not great for off-roading. This thing is a high speed off-roader, but really not too bad. So locking the rear, which I didn't show you on here. Um, I think you can probably see that. And when I flip it off, it goes away. So this is probably your best screen actually to tell you what four wheel drive position you're in because there's no real good lights or anything. Actually going to drop it down into two wheel drive. <laughs> as soon as I did that, it stopped moving. Yep, two wheel drive is a no go, and that's I can feel both wheels spinning even without the rear diff locked. Now we're in four wheel drive auto again. So this hill is a four wheel drive auto hill at the least. I do have traction control off. Let's turn that back on. There we go. And let's see what we can do. There's a lot of articulation in this truck. I'm surprised that, there we go, and it made it that far. You can see which wheels are spinning. I am full throttle, so I'm not gonna do it there. So let's go ahead and turn traction control off. And we're just gonna hit it once, not hold it down. So you can see. Track controls off. And it gave me an extra 500 RPM. 
but that extra 500 RPM is all it needed to make this. Bouncing. Oh, I hate bouncing. We'll try that one more time. That's how you break stuff. Okay, <laughs> definitely not happening there. We have plenty of tools in our arsenal. Rear diff locked. And man, these things, the diffs on this lock really fast. Hit the button and they're locked. Seems to be very consistent. And able to just crawl right up this. And I did not try the off-road mode. So <clears throat> we're gonna do that again. Okay, so I wanna see, I'm in four wheel drive high. Uh, I did the other one in four wheel drive auto, but I'm gonna do high this time just to try and lock the transfer case up as much as we can so we don't overheat it. And didn't have this problem before. Is it gonna do it? Did it, that was a lot of work. I do have traction control off, so I can get a little bit more RPM out of it. not going to make that. We are now in four wheel drive low, locked into first gear. We're in that same spot. And traction control makes easy work of it. Back at the bottom of the hill, four-wheel drive low, and we're in off-road mode. No, we're not. Apparently in four-wheel drive low, there is no off-road mode. Just the regular, so we're just gonna lock everything. That ding again, the ABS. And this thing is ridiculous, so. I was just gonna crawl right up it with both axles locked, as you would expect. Tiny bit of wheel slippage there. Not slippage, the rear end slid into a hole. And there we go. You can see there's plenty of ground clearance there even you know at the worst part of the crest it still has like four inches of clearance to spare.
Checking out protection underneath the vehicle, we see a solid skid plate up front or a bash plate and then another skid plate over the front differential. There's the transmission a little bit uncovered, one over the skid plate and nothing over the fuel tank. Everything else in this is very well protected. You have the fuel tank that is fairly low and not protected. That's the only downside to the underbody protection on this vehicle. Thank you for watching Engine Adventures Off-Road Review of this 2022 Chevy Colorado ZR2 with a 3.6 liter V8. Excellent truck off-road. On the front, not a ton of wheel travel. On the rear, that's a pretty good amount. And when you hit bumps hard and fast, the suspension, the shocks just soak it up. I never felt a hard bottom out once. Jostled the truck around a little bit, but really never felt it bottom out and hit hard. These shocks are incredible. So you don't get as smooth of a ride as you get, of course, in a Raptor or a TRX when you're blazing through the high speed off-road trails, but it does just handle those bumps so well. I was really impressed despite not having a ton of wheel travel it can eat up those bumps and just take it awesome truck off-road i really enjoyed this thing if you're going to do high speed off-road and don't want to drop 70 80 90 100 000 for a raptor or a trx at 45 grand this thing will perform very very well really enjoyed my time with the truck drives great on road those shocks do really good job on road and do an amazing job off-road and hopefully they hold up i have heard some people had problems with them but i think overall people have really enjoyed these shocks and done really well if you liked what you saw be sure to hit the ring hit the ring hit the subscribe button hit the bell so you get notifications when we post new videos and give me a thumbs up and comment down below with any questions comments ideas thoughts whether you like the vehicle or not if you think the zr2 is worse than the ranger tremor or better than the ranger tremor or whatever comment down below and let me know and thank you for watching have a great day